Hello again, and welcome back to the Animite Tales podcast. This time we have Kane, Alex, and Sam joining me today, as we're going to talk about something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's on there. <laughs> you know, it's 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 all, it's you can see it now on the video. <laughs> or you know, if if this ever becomes available on SoundCloud or something on a podcast thing you'll you'll know what it is it's pacifist characters are they if fun an intro like that i don't know. <laughs> <laughs> can they be fun let's find out so i guess we have to open this up to something real quick uh sam i know that you have like a list of different types of pacifists but the only thing that i was just pretty much going to say is uh i actually have a couple of notes for this episode <gasps> Um, Ooh. Ooh. Normally, since I'm the one who usually chooses the episode topic, I usually already know what I want to say. But this time, I had to write notes. Um, I think what's interesting about pacifist character um, is that a lot of people think that there's only one type of of pacifist. Um, and like Sam, as I said, you 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 can lay down the truth truth bombs on us but uh it's not it's not just one particular types of pacifism is it it's not necessarily just only my character never fights my character never gets in arguments or never never becomes violent uh what other forms are there or even what are what are the forms of of pacifism especially uh to to this to this game or to you know uh in general Go for it, Sam. Me, do you want me to read them out, or do you want me to give you... Because I've kind of narrowed them down about four ways, specifically two tabletops, I believe. I guess you could I guess you could label off the current ones, uh, and then like we could talk about how they translate to tabletops. As I did look this up to make sure, there is the... Uh, the absolute pacifist. He believes that there is no reason to use violence, that never never right to take part in war. He believes that the value of human life never justifies killing a person deliberately, even in self-defense. A militant pacifism? Uh, they will use every peaceful method at their disposal to oppose violence in war. This may include civil disobedience, which may result in imprisonment or even death. Okay. I just saw you pinned a message there. Yeah, I'm also posting it in our current chat as well. Oh. Uh, conditional pacifism. Uh, they are great against war. They are against war and violence in principle, but they accept that there may be circumstances when war may lead to less suffering. Uh, selective pacifism. Selective pacifists only oppose wars involving weapons of mass destruction. No nuclear, chemical, or biological. Because of their uniquely devastating consequences to not only humans, but to all living things. Large scale use of weapons of mass destruction also raises the prospect of the annihilation of humans as a species. And finally, there is active pacifism. Active pacifists advocate peace and argue against violence and war. Okay. So we have those. I've also put them in, in our in our uh, DMs, in our group chat, so that we can actually have a look at them um, and use this list. By the way, the list that I've just taken was sent to me by Sam. So this is Sam's. I've just posted it myself. But yes, uh, the four different, uh, well, the five different types of pacifism, absolute pacifism, militant pacifism, conditional pacifism, selective pacifism, and active pacifism. Um, so who'd, who'd like to start about this subject? I think, well, Sam really has the floor on this because, well, I don't know, because, I mean, these are all, like, I didn't really think there would be so much depth for all of these different types of pacifism. I, I, like, I wouldn't consider some of these things as pacifism because it's, like, it's, like, conditional, like, like well, it literally is conditional pacifism, you know? And I would say, I wouldn't necessarily count that as a pacifist. It's like, oh, you know, it's like, it's like being like, oh yeah, vegan, but but I eat fish. Oh yeah, you know, that, it just that, seems like that's yeah. literally everything. Everything is conditional to a degree. 
that most people aren't absolute in most things. I mean, yes, you do like in pacifism, you do have absolute pacifism, which is under no circumstance war is, you know, violence and all that is allowed. But people are always going to find reasons to justify things or how they see things. Because, for example, with pacifism, you're always going to understand that, like the, what was it, the militaristic one or the other one, or militant, where it was like, war might actually lead to less suffering in the world, depending on how it's done. Like That's the conditional pacifist. Yeah, it's, it's conditionalism. And almost anything has conditions from it. I mean, if you think about a couple of things that you probably believe in, there's probably conditional things in that that you wouldn't really agree with might or should be conditional. So I think it's just kind of that thing where it's like, I mean, actually, here's a good one. Death. Some people find certain forms of death funny, and others not, because they don't have that emotional attachment to it. That is a, that is a conditional look on death. Because you are judging how death is in the different eyes of things. Yeah, some, so, some might have a more spiritual understanding or belief of it, um, or even a, a particular idea that death is actually not the end, but it is a secondary purpose of life. Others see it as a more scientific factor of it is the end of life and therefore it is, you know, that that is the cutoff point. And, it, it, you know, others have that, as you said, emotional attachment where, you know, it is either sad or, uh, as you said, some find it funny depending on the particular target of um, who, is, who is susceptible uh, who is susceptible to this particular situation, um, who is the subject of, of this current uh, situation. Um, obviously, you know, if, some, if someone dies, uh, say, for instance, uh, you know, and people love them, like them, or, you know, aren't really necessarily a hater of them, a lot of the time, you know, these people would say, you know, oh, that's very sad, you know, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a tragedy. But then there are other people who look at it and, you know, if they absolutely hate a person, they either go good riddance or sometimes find it funny when something dies. Um, and again, that, that, but also that is also conditional. There's nothing truly absolute. Um, and actually going to something that you said, Alex, about the vegan things, like, oh, someone says, oh, I'm vegan, but this, a lot of people do this thing where they try to cut out a lot of their meats and try and only eat vegan products. But, um, some of them know that like, you know, they don't want to fully cut out. So they go vegan through most of the stuff in their life. And then every now and again, they'll then go and have, like, meat on a couple of days a week. Um, you know, some are absolute vegans. They won't even have anything to do with animal products at all. They won't allow, uh, you know, the, the use or, ha you know, uh, the ownership of leather. They won't, you know, have anything like that. And then, obviously, you've then got vegetarians who don't mind certain animal products. And then, obviously, Sam, you have reminded me of, obviously, pescatarians, the whole thing of, like, oh, I don't like this but fish. Um, funnily enough, there is also like another technicality, which is a weird condition that's uh, like someone brought up in like a video at one point talking about the fact that like technically oysters are vegan because I mean, they don't feel pain and all this other lot and all that lot. And Joe, it's, it's we're getting shit. slightly off topic here talking about veganism. Or we're meant to no, be talking. About no, no, but it's, we, we have we have been talking for most no, of this thing about veganism. No, just listen to me, Sam. I'm um, just listen. Get the to the point. point. The point is, is, is that like uh, I'm, I'm backing up what Kane was saying, which is everything has a level of absolute, is uh, absolute, absolution, and er and everything also has a possibility of conditionalism. So, okay. That the only thing I will I say about about my argument with death, the only thing I will say is that is a like no one knows what the end is thing, or at least people believe that no one has confirmation sort of mm. thing on it. So that's a lot more of an abstract argument. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, go on, sir. Uh, I was saying, because uh, I, mean, I did say specifically in tabletop RPGs with combat systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of tabletop games that don't have violence in them. Violence is not an answer to anything. Well, uh, oh, yeah, of course. This is yeah. also... like, like Golden Sky Stories, for example, which is where you, a good a good tabletop where you don't actually do any violence. You're just helping people. This is also but, a uh, very important part, though, because I actually wanted to say this. Uh, this is actually one of my yeah. notes, which is um, pacifism is uh, obviously in not just in not just uh, combat RPGs, but in 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 general, pacifism isn't uh, pacifism isn't necessarily um, inactivity, and it shouldn't be confused as, with, was... as such. 
Um, I was going to bring that up. It is possible. Had... It is possible to build a passive character and have it that they can still do stuff and even fight without them necessarily uh, breaking their pacificity. Because as I said, I have thought of four ways that you could be a pacifist character in tabletop RPG games. Okay, I lay them on us. Oh, there is the like the quote unquote absolute pacifist. An example being just someone who only heals people. That's how you would play it. In that you would either stay in the background, try and stop fights if you can, but only heal, and wherever the fight brings out, you go to the back. Another example being uh, there's this anime called Grenadier, which Alex has seen the first episode of. Incredible. It's an incredible, incredible, incredible show. <laughs> I, do, I do. Okay, I will say it is, it is a bit quote unquote horny. It, the, the actual, it's not even that, it's just it, ridiculous. Get on, get, on, okay, anyway. get on to the point of why it is pacifism, Sam. Hey, you were the one talking about veganism and death. <laughs> no, I, I want to know, I wanna know more about this horniness. Go on. So, yeah, so, so, is so, that in the in the anime, she uses a gun. Mm. She doesn't actually hurt anybody. She disarms people, robs them of their armor and clothing, and more or less makes them surrender because okay. they have they've lost the will to fight. What you can do in a lot of tabletop games is, like, say you're fighting a wizard, you cut his book in half. He has no spells. You can then defeat him. You'll probably surrender right then and there. Mm. The other I mean, that's one, the same, that's the same sort of thing. Kenshin Aurora, where he um uses he has a blade design to just uh, basically reverses it, so the front end is actually just blunt. Mm. So he has a sword that's basically incapable of killing anyone, um, because he refuses to kill and he tries his damnedest to either stop a fight from happening or, uh, if he has to fight, never take a life from it. Mm. So. That's pretty much the third one, is that you pretty much you always try and stop a fight before it happens. You, even when the fight begins, you try to dodge for most of the time. Then you will eventually fight back and go for the knockout rather than the kill. Mm. Which is like, like I want to say that probably would be what a bard would do. Or like a thief, like a thief character, like in the uh, Geralt, not Geralt, the main character of Thief. Oh, yeah, will, yes, yeah. Where he sneaks around, but when he has to, if he has no other choice, he will knock out people. Fourth one is, is like the killing as the last resort to stop greater death. Mm. Be like an assassin character. Like, a given example, being like, say there is a war going on, and you and his assassin know that if you kill the advisor, war will probably stop. And the advisor stops the war, greater good. Stop more bloodshed. The life of one person. But I think it's the four ways you could play a pacifist in a tabletop setting. Okay. That is the thoughts I have brought. What do you think of them? I I definitely think that the when I first heard pacifist, the first thing I thought that would be the obvious two would be no fighting whatsoever, but still be in combat for the means of supporting others or just being the healer. The other one was actually pacifism in the forms of just never going past... It's the, the, almost the Batman rule of we can beat them, but we cannot um, kill them. Like, no matter how far the rule goes, always holding back, always doing the non-lethal option and always, you know, even if they break free multiple times, even if they seem like as if they're never going to change their ways, never killing them. Um, and that's sort of the, the way that I see it, uh, that those two ways could be probably the most prominent. Uh, but that's, that's sort of my opinion on it. I think that, well, I have some opinions because of like, you know, I mean, I've complained about this a lot because I think it is dependent on how willing the DM is willing to like go with the thing. Because, well, I know Sam and I, and I think that this is will come to bite him in the end. His pacifist character, yeah. you know, is that if there's a situation in which there is no option but to fight, you know, you can't just like Avatar: The Last Airbender your way out of it by finding a new skill. You know, that, like, reverse Uno's it. You know what I mean? I just think yeah. that 
I just I just think that it could be become less fun if you have a character that doubles down on pacifism or that, that just doesn't you know just you know, just doesn't work. It's not only the know. DM, though. It's also the other players. Like, are the other players willing to put up with a character like that? Like, yeah. Because if because if you being a pacifist is generally making it harder for people to enjoy their characters or enjoy things because it's basically causing everything to go down another another route, even the simplest things. This is why I like the wording of this because uh, Sam bringing it up in the form of. Uh, is you know, is it fun to play as a fat pacifist in in tabletop RPGs? I think it can be, but it can also be a massive disadvantage or an incredibly difficult drag. I would say it only works if the pacifism rules are set from the get go, and people know what they're working with, yes. rather than yeah. them turn into a pacifist later. Uh, because then you end up in a situation where it seems almost as if the character nerfs themselves, and they're now having to deal with the new rules of the character. Well, okay, I could, I could see that working if you pre-plan it ahead. Like, it's not something you can just like bring out of the blue, right? Hmm. It's that sort of thing where you'd be like, "Hey, DM, this is kind of where I want to take my character. Would this work?" Um. And then possibly sort of seeing how things could go from there. Because I think if you if you try and just force things in, it's going to create not only fi- friction with the DM, but it's also going to create friction with the players. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Which is just going to make everything less enjoyable for everyone. Yeah. So, I think... It's, it's, it's I, like actual, you know, uh, dynamics within different, you know, political factions. Because there will be, like, some situations and some people that just will not get along you know yeah. for that reason because that ideologies are so different so and then it becomes a little bit too much like real life it's like you know we're having a philosophical conversation about this every day and some people may like that that's really good but some some people might find that me rather annoying <laughs> <laughs> but why do you so, feel that annoying what... alex <laughs> <laughs> but uh Considering the four I've laid out, which one do you think would be the one if you had to play a pacifist character? Would Actually, you I I raise you. I, I'll I will raise you. I have played a kind of pacifist character before. With which selective one of the four pacifism. Did you play? Yeah, selective pacifism. It was like Warhead. Like his whole thing was that you know he was he was fine with war and fighting, but the fact that it was just this large scale destruction of like. You know, complete genocide, and just to the point where war was. You know, at this point, war was just like it was just ridiculous. They were going to like wipe each other out completely. That was the limit. I don't know because you know? I think really the only reason that like Warhead changed the way that they changed is because that they realized, wow, this could literally wipe out everyone. But yeah, then, that's what I'm saying. Hang on, is, hang on. But then you then, them. in the same stride, created your final ability to be called Dirty Bomb. Which, yeah, because uh, it was a cool name. Yeah, and it literally worked like a c- contagion explosion because anyone who's caught in it basically was infected th- with another explosion. Yeah, that would be literally one person. It's not like a weapon of mass destruction it where an entire was. village would go. Anyone who's caught up in the explosion is now infected with an explosion that blows them up from the inside. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's like one. That's like one person though. Not like. They, that's the thing, you know. Warhead wouldn't like be using those things lightly, you know, at all. It would only be for like, it would only be for that particular asshole. I th- it's funny though because you did use it twice. Um, yeah. Uh, which then, again, when uh, I had no choice. I, again, though, this this proves this disproves that concept of like. Uh, it, I don't think it does, it, you know. It was just because I used to I used it literally twice. Like if if it was the case with Warhead, it was like, oh yeah, we're gonna you know, we're gonna totally do the, this willy nilly okay. whatever I want. I would be reason, using that shit all the time. The only reason <laughs> that it was only twice is because that you literally only ever got to use it twice. Like that's the only reason. Because you used it once and then the next session well, that, that is uh, unfair. Y- yes, that is but seriously that, that unfair. Is, that, is the that is unfair. But yeah, that's <laughs> statistics for a, for a did. But I had it for longer than that, though. 
It wasn't like, oh yay, uh, no. you know, I'm going to start using this every. You didn't. <laughs> you got it. You got it after I okayed it. You then you then used it uh, the the session after. Um, like I guess, I guess like that's, yeah that's for Haskonian. yeah. He was like my main nemesis, <laughs> and was go and was you know, and we were f far away from the entire fucking village, so that only we could get hurt. <laughs> I mean, I Man. don't know. It's I don't know. For once, I for once I have to agree with Joe here. It's not very. Oh come I mean, on! <laughs> only, I mean, only because I mean, no, sorry. I've just yeah. hang on a sec, guys. I'm, it's just getting colder. I think hell's just frozen over. Wait, is that a pig flying? Yeah, that's too much dark. Wait, on this here. one point, you're wrong, and everything else, Joe. Yeah, fair enough. Don't worry. <laughs> I I don't legit think a player a character who's even remotely a pacifist. Yeah, because I it's think fun. The, the closest I've played, arguably, maybe maybe was mask and all that really was was not really because he was against violence or anything but he only really tried to kill if it was necessary because he if used it, to be a mercenary he, yeah so it was more like less pacifism and more just like a waste of life like there's no need for me to kill you if i can just sneak past you and get the item however if they did get in his way, he had no qualms of killing them. I guess you could say that it was like a reverse conditional pacifism, where it's like conditional uh, conditional pacifists are against war and violence in the principle, but uh, they accept that there, there may be circumstances that may, may lead to less suffering. Instead, it was more, he is absolutely fine with killing, just not killing innocents and killing for the sake of killing, Like, but he is not, uh, he's not a stranger to ending a life. It's just that he doesn't see ending a life to be the first uh, answer. Um, yeah, like, I think that's the closest I've got. I think I, I, other than Sam, I think I can trump all three of you. Um, other than Sam, uh, Simon Lyme. Uh, Simon Lyme, yeah, legitimately yeah. Simon Lyme. Uh, he was a pacifist in the first ever time I played as him. He was a religious man as well. Um, the main form of pacifism, I guess you could say, was... He wasn't absolute pacifism. I would say he was more... I, I'd say... Um, he... He's... Basically, he, I guess it was more conditional pacifism, but in the way that it worked is he would only fight if he absolutely was thrust into it and he had to do it as necessary. He would never kill, and um, he would always try and find a charismatic or diplomatic approach rather than violence. Um, he would only ever fight and kill creatures if he knew that though if he knew that there was no other way to stop the creatures, like you know animals and stuff like that. Um, but often he would prefer to have it that if he did kill the creature, that it would then be you be you know put to use rather than just the waste of a life. Um, so that's that's the best that I could do. But I know for a fact Sam has us beaten in terms of Animite Tales characters that we've all played in terms of pacifism. Animite Tales and just in general, because I've I've played I've I'm played a pacifist and I'm playing a pacifist. You I played Macaria. Yeah, both, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say you played and are playing a character called Macaria, who in the yeah. one with Bill, it was what was it? Um, biological manipulation, oh. so you can heal people. That was about yeah. She was. Uh, like, I can't remember. I think she had another power, but I can't remember what it was. If it, she did, uh, and she was a priestess of the Great One, and she could not hurt per people and could not hurt people. He just healed from the background and did her best to try and stop violence and to stop her teammates doing silly things. Which, to the most part, worked. Yes. To the most to part. the time worked. Sometimes. You know, sometimes people died in her watch. Didn't she, didn't she lose her eyes saving someone? Uh, one of them. Oh, actually, no, both of them. Yeah, no, yeah. She went blind for a brief time. Yeah. She, was she was blind for like two here. sessions, which... That was actually yeah. That was a thing that we were like, "Is this is this ever gonna like change? Is this ever gonna work?" Uh, I, yeah, I did quite like that. 
Um, you see, that, that, that kind of like was, uh, I don't know, it's like, this is my whole problem with pacifist run characters like that. It's like, her losing her sight permanently to me would have been like a really good, you know, sort of story moment. But she had like, you know, healing abilities anyway. So on one hand, it was kind of an annoying because, oh my god, they've lost so many, you know, benefits by, uh, you know, losing their sight. But at the same time, it's like, oh my god, this is like a, a, a forever reminder, you know, of the toll that her pacifism has taken, you know, in saving someone. And then it's they, just removed. She's about to say, six, yeah, and then it's like, yeah, like, well, yeah. <laughs> it literally doesn't matter. So <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine how annoying that must be to ha- actually have it where there could be one or even two characters that can completely remove consequence from a campaign. Couldn't imagine having that. Not especially a uh, you know a biokinetic at like maximum level and also a time child who could reverse people from dying. Yeah, I can't imagine having a campaign with anything yeah, like that. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, yes, we have no other examples. Yeah, too bad. Uh, too bad, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at some point, I've got to try one of the other ones I've said. Probably the yeah. Uh, I mean, I was destroying about, weapon stuff. Yeah, I was thinking about your question earlier about if you were to play a pacifist, which one would you do? I would probably do conditional pacifist. I feel like that's one that could fit in quite well with just sort of most groups. Which as one would that? And the ones that I've described, like the four of them, the one where you don't do anything, where you only destroy probably, armor probably, weapons, the one where you knock them out, the one where you kill. Only probably like a combination between the one that knocks out and the one that will only kill specifically. So they don't even really ever knock out most people, but if they saw, if their if their conclusion came from, if I rid this person from the world, it will save. You know, a bunch more lives. Technically, I guess Anarche is the closest thing that you have to that at the moment. No. Anarche, well, well, no. no. Hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Yeah. Anarche, Anarche no. is fine with violence, but he doesn't. He, he doesn't kill for the sake of killing. Oh my, no, 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 bro, no, bro, no. If like Warhead, he if also, Warhead isn't a pacifist, I'm not having Anarche be a pacifist. No, okay, we're not doing name this. Name one time no. in this. Well, name one time in this campaign that he has actually killed anyone. Last session. There we go. No, because those yes. guys aren't dead. None of them. None of them died. None of them died, no. Because you didn't exceed the, the health and the attacks that you did didn't exceed their vitality. It shows you he wasn't trying not to kill them. No, <laughs> but he wasn't <laughs> trying to actively kill them. <laughs> Manslaughter is not murder. <laughs> also, if you pissed them off, he would just straight up kill you. And okay. actually, you know from my backstory that he would kill someone. Yeah, but he's the, he's affected by that. Like it. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying he's like an immoral man who doesn't feel things and will just kill people and not feel a thing. But it's more like so you're saying he's, he's, not, he's a, he he would kill, but he 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 at least has morals. Is what you're he saying. tries not to kill, but if he does kill by accident, it's probably not gonna weigh on him too much unless it was like some super important if it's just a generally short person he kills this is, why just, oh, I mean, like, this is what i mean that's way more conditional pacifism because again like the reason why he beats people is not to kill and end them like you and i were talking about this a while back where it's like uh if an rk fought your kaiga would he kill him and you were like not unless if there was not unless if like if the attack legitimately ended him by accident like you said that he he would just beat him and then be like yeah okay now you have to live the rest of your life knowing that I was the one who beat you and that's the punishment that you have because anarche doesn't necessarily care about killing uh until it's that point where it's like he sees no other alternative or this is going to be the scourge of this particular location of this particular species or this particular whatever so at this point they need to be stopped they need to be ended i'm not yeah, but say- he also as he also said, he's, he doesn't care so much as to not kill them. There's a big difference. If he, has, he kills them by accident, he doesn't care. He has standards as to what consummates the requirement, the requirement to kill. I'd say that that's a level of conditional pacifism. I'm not he's saying... pushing. He's very, very hard pushing conditional pacifism if you even want to put him in that yeah. boundary. Yeah. 
The same like, way he, I would he's like, on the he is on like the mountain top, either like falling one way or the other. Like there <laughs> the is. Same way you could classify the Punisher as a pacifist, as he kills only people who are bad. Okay, fair. No, you know what? That's the, Sa- that's the, that's the same has, moral message. Sam has sold me on this. <laughs> okay, it's yeah. not yeah. a conditional pacifist. Yeah, very yeah. So, yeah. Conditional then, pacifist, as I said, would be trying to do, like, to kill one person if you know that would save a thousand others. I mean, he would definitely yeah. do that, but to be honest, that again, as Kane said, like, he has no qualms <laughs> with killing if it just meant that this guy is just, you know deserves it like you know Only almost like the swing of justice the, the the what was it the swing of the blade of justice or something like that like if he believes what? that it would end them uh if it would if it would stop it i would i would still say potentially selective pacifism because i i assume that he wouldn't want to use nuclear or chemical biological weapons but at the same time he, but he is a biological he is a he is a nuclear not, weapon yeah, but he doesn't have an ability that is just called ultimate reign of death where everyone just gets radiation poisoning and then just start Give him time. Up blood yeah. <laughs> it's literally that's literally not at all what warhead does though it is just affects the one person who gets touched no, when they're fighting it's though discriminate <laughs> It literally isn't. I could just it activate it. You know what? When you activate it, anyone who's within the radius of the explosion, anyone who gets caught up in it, and, hang on. and it's hang AOE. On, hang on. Yeah, hang on. It, it, which is why I went went far away. Do you, do you have Do you have the sheet for Warhead? <laughs> yeah. I, well, uh, I think I do. It's some in some drawer somewhere. Okay. Because all I'm like, saying why? is, if you if you could, you could read exactly what that ability does. <laughs> And then we can see, because if, it, if it's only one person, then fair enough, but if it is indiscriminate, as Joe says, then it is kind of pushing it. So, if you can, okay. if you can give me evidence... I remember it being your... AOE. I remember it being AOE. Well, you remember differently than I do, so there... Mm... It, it's definitely <laughs> AOE. I like, without a doubt. No. You're going you're gonna to no, go and find just... it and then not even tell the truth. I know you... I no, I will. Well. I absolutely know it. Absolutely not. That is that is slander on the podcast, everyone. That is that is slander. I think you, you know. I will actually find it. DMs. I think yeah. If you want to see, see it in the DMs, then sure. Then I'll shut up. If we, uh, <laughs> um, if that's but, the case, I guess whilst I'm doing that, I guess I'll throw a question out here for this subject. Then, uh, do you think that? Uh, do you think that there's any particular? way that it can be done well because i know that the defense in this particular regard is oh yes you know it can be done well okay so what's the advantages and disadvantages of playing as a pacifist in a tabletop rpg and i'm gonna i'm gonna put it down to this uh we've seen them a couple of times in our games but i'm gonna say what would be the advantages and the disadvantages of playing as a pacifist in one of the stream games I think, mm. I think here's the thing. It would make things a lot more interesting because here's the thing: you can't just go, "How am I going to end this solution?" Oh, I'll just blow everyone up, right? You can't take the easy route out in situations. You actually have to think and sort of strategize and figure out. Okay, I'm having to fight at a disadvantage always, no matter who my opponent is, whether they're weaker than me or like a hundred times stronger. How am I going to get around this? I can't kill people. They can technically use hostages of threat and death. Right? There's a there's a million ways they can fight back. The the problematic thing is is that you have to hold yourself back, which could make it and quite possibly to a degree or most hold back the the entire team as well, dependent. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could see that being an issue. However, I'd argue the advantage is that it adds for a lot more intrigue. Because you're not just solving things the simple hobo murderer solution to rain fiery death upon everyone. It, again, it, it requires you to actually think to solve a solution, which I I quite enjoy because again, sometimes it's you don't really have to think about a combat scenario after a while because you just know what you're doing. At least I find that with a lot of my abilities, because I make a lot of utility characters, which means there's very few scenarios where my character can't do something. Um, that might just be my experience, but it's just the thing of 
it's nice to actually have to think around solutions instead of just going straight forward. Uh, the so, other things I feel like is dialogue and, and like sort of just interactions with people, right? It's probably nicer because you're more likely to end up talking to your enemies. Right? You're probably more likely to end mm-hmm. up getting to know your enemies. Mm. Where if you're a hobo murderer, why, why would you care? There's just going to be another course in your wake. Unless they've done something particular to you, but then that just becomes a personal issue, right? But where with a, a pacifist character, the one thing that they're going to be hopefully good at, or they might not be, but trying to be, is talking people down. Actually learning people's stories and trying to connect with them to stop them from doing what they're doing. It also gives a really good uh, context for wisdom, intelligence, and charisma roles. Because obviously, you've yeah. got charisma for obviously talking them down. Insight to see whether or not what you're saying is actually affecting them, or even if what they're saying is actually true or anything like that. But also intelligence to maybe be able to have it that um, you can do a little bit of meta surfing with your DM and just say like, hey, so I'm not actually sure about the answer here. Uh yeah. Can I roll an intelligence to maybe see if what's the logical argument here? And it's like, yeah. okay, you could use this, or you could use that. Knowing with the combination of my inside intelligence, what would be the sort of thing he would want to hear? Yes, yeah, exactly. And I think that's a really cool way of doing it because it then gives more purpose for those stats other than to ugh, other than to activate your powers. Uh, and to like, dump learn stat. traits or yeah. be a dump stat. Yeah, you can actually have a lot more focus. Because again, you know, what is this game if not, you know, partially a role play? Like, you know, it's it's that factor of your character is in this living, breathing world. And having pacifism, I think, also makes sense because we've talked about this before. Like, Alex, you and I were talking about, like, you having a character that's actually squeamish and doesn't like the idea of of yeah. injuring people because they don't like the sight of blood and doesn't like getting injured because they don't like the sight of their own blood. Um, and that's an interesting level of pacifism of like, oh, I don't mind everyone else fighting, just don't let me see it. Uh, but I'll heal you for all your wounds, just again, I can't look at you whilst you're basically a near-mangled, near-corpse. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's quite, quite a good way... I think- I think the other fun thing to have for a pacifism is you can technically have the strongest power in the game. You could have, like, I don't know, godlike ability where everything around you just gets torn to shreds, right? And you can't really use your powers to their fullest because you know they're too dangerous. Like, if you have a power, like a dangerous power, right? And I kind of find that more interesting. Because, again, you are it's just putting limitations on yourself to a degree, where now you actually have to think, okay, I can't just, you know, go through life relying on my powers to just obliterate everything in front of me. Kind of repeating the same arguments before, but you get my point. It's just like, there's a lot more things you have to limitate yourself on, and that includes powers. And I think playing as a pacifist with a, not a healing ability, but a dangerous ability that could easily kill people, I find a bit more entertaining. Yeah, because it also because, means that you have... Oh. Yeah, no, all it's going to say is it means they have to think around it. They can't just go, oh, I'll just sit back and heal everyone. It's No, I've got this dangerous power that could really easily kill someone. How am I going to use this? Which is, Can I use it? Which is one of it the reasons... Also mean that you... No, no, go, sir. It also means you have to use powers in radically different ways than how you would use before. Mm. Exactly. Because a, a lot of the powers, all like the list of powers, you say, oh, there, that's damage, that's damage. How can I use fire as a pacifism, right? Well, I could make a smoke. I can, like, uh, I could uh, make a smoke bomb or something so that people think there's a fire, make them flee the scene. One of my favorite uses of or, fire. Um, sorry, I was just going to say, one of my favorite uses of fire was in Fire Force. There's literally a character that creates such an intense heat around people, it then causes them to have heat syncope, which can make them feel woozy and then immediately just like make them go unconscious, which is dangerous for their body temperature and it's dangerous for their their body. And if they're under that uh, condition too long, then eventually they will die. But it's better than hitting them with a direct fire blast because 
you know, they'll burn up and like nice and crispy. Whereas like if you just hit them with enough intense heat that isn't necessarily on fire, it can just knock them out temporarily. So that's a really kind of an interesting way of using it without necessarily just going, yeah, a blast with fire and everything else is around you is on fire. And, you know, I, I don't really know what's going on other than everything is now ablaze. Also it allows you to go different routes through a campaign hmm. or rather than like say there's a castle we need to get into at some point rather than going the basic route of okay we'll just kill everyone in our path you can do the more kind of fun route of oh we'll disguise ourselves as these people and just kind of go in yeah we'll we'll, we'll, you know, we'll blag our way in yeah, I, yeah we're, we're the band yeah we I, don't know any I, songs I, but we're the band yeah no I, I agree but I also think one power that is kind of like, I th- I mean, this one's already kind of, you could say, made for this power, but I think it's kind of messed up in, like, if you're looking, if your character is very moral about things, and, and that's telepathy. Because yes. with hmm. that one power, you have the ability to understand the deepest things about another person. Yet you have to break that sanctum to be able to do that. Which means... Do I basically intrude on people's darkest and, you know, like, most held secrets if it means I could help them and save people? Hmm. There actually, there was another argument that I had with Conrad, actually, who is in one of the games. Mm. We discussed, because we talked about this yesterday. You'd be a pacifist, but also evil. I think and that's, what, that's I what we think agreed so. upon with telepathy, because... Let's like let, let's give let's give the perfectly good example of say you have telepathy and you're a pacifist and you think you know what the world is full of evil people I'm going to make sure that no evil gets done so I'm going to mind control everybody and make them lose the will to fight and manipulate them so they don't want to fight ever again. I mean, if you've ever watched Code Geass, that's literally yes. what that is. Yeah. I mean, he's slight, he's slightly more like less pacifist about it. Maybe nominally. Yeah, his, his when, whole when, he, when, he, end, yeah, when he finds his out whole about... to end war in total, like just end also by, like almost conflict. Right. When he finds out about those weird reverse drives that are like basically can be turned into those like ultimate warheads that can completely erase areas at a time. He actually wants them abolished. He doesn't want to use them because, again, at one point, they literally find them and is like, no, don't use them because they're dangerous. And because at, at the time, he thought that his sister, Nanali, was wiped out by one of them. And so, therefore, he was put in that situation and he was like, no, I never want them to be used. So he doesn't go after the, the warheads to try and use them because he knows that they're too... They're too dangerous, and they're and just that, that sort of like psychological um, block. There, uh, I was actually going to say uh, one of one of the actual interesting ones is: Do you think a character is a pacifist just because they don't use their their ability in front of their their teammates because they don't want their teammates to be hurt? But as soon as their teammates are away, they then use their abilities as much as they want. Because I no. think I think no, that I don't think, I think no. Like, no. I think you're the only thing you can push for and barely pushing for is selective pacifism. And that's more of a personal thing because it's more like when it comes to violence, I want nothing to do with my friends. Yeah. Or I want violence to be nothing to do with them. But, but once fair, they're out of the picture. To be fair, at that point, like it's not even the best form of selective pacifism because like Oh no! It, it it's more like okay, there, here's this one condition that I've set, and it's less less about that. It's just more I don't want to kill people that I I need, and I don't want to kill people that I have emotional no. attachment to. Like that would be like, hey, I'm a pacifist That's just because like, I fight for this side, and I don't fight these yeah. people on my yeah. side. You know, yeah. And that's why that's another reason why I think that it's it's another vote against against Warhead. But I also think that this is actually a really good vote against Phileas, because. Phileas had a massively powerful ability and he never used it because he was terrified of exploding everyone around him and completely wiping them out. But he was definitely not a pacifist. <laughs> no, I don't. Joe, we're, we're long gone there. That was, I, he's, he was never in the runs to be a pacifist. <laughs> ever. What's, like, at all. What's your, what's your key weapon, Axis? Um, do you mean like, as in like, they're your tools? No, I literally chop people apart with axes. Ah, oh, okay. To be fair, okay, I will give him this. It all went downhill when he accidentally skewered that man with the anchor. 
that's when it all went down. Okay, yeah, he did literally he was, lose his. his he manga. was in that campaign. He was mostly fine. The other campaign, Anarche, was a terrible influence because we murdered a bunch of bandits. <laughs> um, uh, oh my god! Well, he... I mean, you say that, but he made like a coat out of a that was, person. That was after the anchor. So... That was after the anchor. That was after. The, that was I don't think it was. No, it definitely was. Are you was. sure? No, a hundred percent. It was. He he killed the guy of the anchor. Then we ran into the pirate lords, and then you ended up on Chibo. Really? I thought that was like after Chibo. No, that no, was like the, no. Like, I'll uh... tell you how I know this because Hawk was with them when that happened. Hawk oh, wasn't okay, with then. you guys until uh, Hawk was Hawk wasn't with you guys after you left Chibo, and Hawk was with you the entire time uh, during that during that time. And uh, the reason I know this because Hawk went uh, after he threw the uh, after Phileas threw the anchor killed the the captain of that pirate crew hawk went aboard that ship and opened up a weird chest to find out that there was like a portal on the other side of it that's how i remember that scene because it was like it was like phileas is just like what have i done and then hawk is just like anyway i'm gonna go see if they have treasure <laughs> uh fair, fair enough I, I yeah no i i do remember that but i i think i think in the terms of pacifism uh, obviously, obviously, it's it's almost impossible to argue if anyone in the current tournament arc is, because the, the tournament campaign is literally a tournament of martial arts and fighting, and yes, some of them could be pacifists, but none of you guys are pacifists. You are all like yeah. straight up sociopaths. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's more fun. Well, I argue that it's more fun to be. Uh, you know, in this campaign in particular, because it's you know it's a well, yeah, if it's if it's everything. the setting, it would be very difficult to be a pacifist and join a, a worldwide tournament. For yeah, I mean it's impossible, and it just wouldn't be. I don't know if know, it's impossible. I think it's possible. It's just like it. You would not be able to be like a true pacifist, obviously. But that's the answer to the question. Unless you did the evil one of just making people like you don't want to fight me anymore. You want to kneel down and punch yourself till you're knocked out. With, like, <laughs> it's still not necessarily pacifism though, because there is a form I mean, of that's... violence. I mean, like, uh, like you all, you know, just well, you only you... you only go after like the really bad people in the tournament, right? Like the people who are just killing everyone for I just feel points like, and all. Because like... you're going the route of you're trying to stop all fighting by becoming the winner. So if you make someone stop fighting and give them your and give them give me your band, you're stopping a fight, without actually hurting anybody. Hmm. I would say. Yeah. A pacifist. I would say maybe not, maybe not good pacifist, but he, you know, neutral. Okay, here's, here's, a, here's a question for you then. So, obviously, like uh, Alex, you're saying that like pacifist characters aren't really fun, or at least you don't think that they can be f fun very easily. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say, um, I'd say, I'd say, like making a pacifist character isn't impossible. But it's almost impossible to be able to draw the lines after the actions that you've caused. Like, again, like, we're still having this debate on Warhead, but I still think that, like, after the proof that I gave, which, by the way, yes, I was correct, it was an AoE, indiscriminate, and the both the times that you used it were both during those points, there's no way uh, that they were yeah. pacifist at all. Oh, absolutely! I absolutely no. got them out of the way. It totally was like I was literally challenged and trying to stop the, the greater only thing time of happening. That you got people out of the way was because you didn't want people in the team to get hurt. Because that's uh, and to. other people, you know, other there was literally like people trying to kill us and like against you know and are totally on board with the killing no everyone in the world fighting and killing. Like yeah. I, I will say one thing uh, that doesn't help your case, Alex. Uh, we were we were outside a fort. I was discussing a plan <laughs> about how I could just steal the item and no one would even have to be hurt. Warhead and a certain someone immediately jumps into the center of camp and starts beating the shit out of everyone. Now, tell me, Alex, is that a very pacifist action? I remember that. Uh, it's because it went wrong, though. No! 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 That's literally like we went wrong. Started. You just did it. 
Oh my There's gosh. nothing it went wrong. It was just, you didn't let me That's do anything. Even funnier That's is just, when you got hit accept. by an attack, you then said, oh my god, I'm dead, which you didn't even lose all your health at the time. And oh, oh my gosh, I remember that. Because oh, I literally oh, yeah, I only remember. jumped in because of like, because of like Siobhan was jumping in as well. So I had to like help it. I mean, no, I no. No, I yeah. Sorry, Alex, but in this case, no. I'm I don't. Hundred percent sold it, uh, on on the fact. That I, did, I didn't say one. that it was like totally. I said it was select. I said it was selective pacifism. No, but you still killed people, and there was never a thing of like, oh no, uh, it's just, it's just. No, 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 no. Look at the definition. Look at the definition of selective pacifism. Okay, okay? it's like you know, it's like. Selective you know, the, it's on only, oppo only opposed to wars involving weapons of mass destruction. You were literally, you created your own ability that was a weapon of mass destruction. It was literally called Dirty Bomb Which and it was I a biological use. weapon. Which I didn't use until Twice. it was absolutely necessary. And you literally used it as soon as you created it. Therefore, I'm not counting that. No, that's, like, that's okay, actually we, not. You we made actually forced me into a situation a where I would have to in order to survive. We made a nuclear <laughs> device. What do we do with this nuclear device? Well, we need to use it for the last resort. Oh, what have you done? I've already dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, far away from everybody. If it was like, oh yeah, I look. If that was the case, and I was just... gonna play it like that, I would have just done it willy nilly and just like Straight you know kill also, you know kill a whole bunch of people. You guys <laughs> also took your hands on and and you even found out about a device that literally was like a massively powerful weapon of destruction. You're like, well, we'll take it and we'll use it to power this device. And you're like, can't we just use it to fuel ourselves to gain more power? Like that that was a thing that like you guys were trying to do at one point. Um, and again, it's just like this is not selective pacifism because at no point did you go maybe no maybe we should put this away and nobody should have it. No, it's like no, we because we need to win the war because because everyone dies if we don't win the war. It's not selective <laughs> pacifism. I am a hundred percent sold against a warhead now. Like there's no way in any way, shape, or form that warhead was ever an advocate of any kind <laughs> no. of pacifism. Alex, I think for once, for once, I go and uh, can agree on this. I don't think yours. Well, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have to. Is... Well, I'm gonna have to disagree. Still, I think that that's you know overly harsh. I, no, it's not overly harsh. It's <laughs> factual. No, I'm case. absolutely in again. No, anyway, sorry, God. <laughs> in any case. Sorry, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna just keep arguing because I'm still gonna disagree. So tough. you know. In any case. I think we should actually answer the main question of this. Can it be fun? Do we think, each of us in turn, do we think it can be fun to play a pacifist character in a tabletop RPG with combat mechanics? Ian. I believe so. Joe. I... <laughs> I'm sorry, are you Joe? Are you Joe? No, Come fine. at me, bro. All right. <laughs> so, much, so much tension. So much tension in the um, chat. So uh, can it be fun? Can it be fun? Uh, I, mm, uh, if people, yes or no. if it's not okay, it's not a yes or a no question, dude. It's it's really not because it really is dependent. Just like just like everything else in tabletop RPGs, it's really dependent. In all honesty, I think there is a theoretical possibility where it could be. I also think that it could be a massive pain in the ass if you have people who are stretching the definition of pacifism. And they're going and making their own rules and their own types of pacifism. And you're just like, okay, well, this isn't really pacifism. We're trying to make a hero campaign and you just killed like 30 people. Yeah, but like, the, you know, I, 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 I can't, you know, it's, it's my type of pacifism. And I, I think when you start drawing your own lines in, instead of looking at the actual facts of it, uh, I think that's when it becomes dangerous. So I think because of the contention alone, I think, I think that, I think it can but I think the majority is that it, it has a lot more possibility of being actually a, a bigger burden than anything else. So what you mean is, yes, it can be fun theoretically to be a pacifist. I mean, it's the the margin. The margin is a lot slimmer than actually, you know, it just being a lot more fun to not play. As pacifist. Well, because it's like <laughs> it's literally passive. This is the problem. You weren't playing I think. as a pacifist, not, Alex, so it doesn't matter. So it's you not don't know. Passive it doesn't mean <laughs> passive. <laughs> To be a pacifist. Oh no! Well, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, it totally. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing of how you play. It. I mean, you could play the healer role and like 
Well, I don't mind being the healer. It's just the, you know, yeah. I've been the healer for, you know, for a lot of cabin, not just in, you know, Anamite Tales, but in other uh, tabletop RPGs, and it can get a little bit old. To be you know, fair, well, like, yeah, yeah. When, as we were saying earlier, you don't have to be a healer to be a pacifist. And you also don't like, have to be a yeah. pacifist to be a healer. Like, you know. Yeah. Exactly, like I was. Uh, no, hang on a second. Aspen the... was not a pacifist in any way. Yeah, that's what I said. I said, yeah, I, oh, you okay, know, Aspen sorry. wasn't a pacifist. I was gonna you go... know what? You know what? I'm, cool. I'm turning <laughs> this podcast around. <laughs> I'm turning this podcast around, you know. <laughs> As of today, Alex will no longer be joining us. <laughs> no. No, um, I, no, no, no. Because I, I, I'm salty, so. Because you're wrong. You know. Anyway, sorry. No, because it's. I mean, you are in. You know what? We have a difference of opinion. It's a fact. And, uh, it's not a fact. It is a fact. I think it can definitely be fun to play a fast first. What's oh your, yeah, you're playing one. What's your, what's, your ba- what's your background behind that? And I don't mean as in personal experience. I mean like, where do you think that uh, it can support that, Sam? I support. Yeah. Well, I'm playing a pass first right now. It's quite no, fun. No, that's not. That's not enough. That's subjectivity. Okay. Well. Let us go, if I had to go, the route of video games. No. No, I mean tabletop RPGs. Like, why do you think that they can be fun? What's your, what's your why do you think, support it me- for this argument? Because it means that, okay, then I will go with one of the other characters that did play. He was a... Pretty much the third type of pacifism. Like the second, third, but he would try and disarm people and make them lose the will to fight. But if he had to, he would knock them out. I played a. It was a cobalt artificer. More or less was Doctor Doom, and like I kind of like kind of. More or less, what he wanted to do, he wanted to create a. He wanted to create a state where everyone was equal, and whenever he would fight people, he would not actually hurt them. He would aim for their guns, like aim for like their their weapons, their armor, and just try to disarm them and then talk them down. Then more or less invite them to join his team. So that by the end of the game, he had acquired pretty much an army of people who were loyal to him because he spared their lives and then helped them improve upon their life. Those that didn't agree were just kind of knocked out and left. Okay. Because that's the that's the great thing that you can do with pacifism is that yeah, you can kill people, but wouldn't you rather them join your side and become your team member? So Sam, I'm going to help out your argument here. Um, I'm going I'm to sum this up. I think pacifism and the enjoyment from it comes from um, enjoyment via limitations. <laughs> well, yes. But it's enjoyment via limitations. It's limiting the way you can act, so you have to behave differently and view things a different way if you have done before. It's using things creatively because you can't just do it like without thinking. I it's, actually, it's actually it's actually learning to give a shit about the characters because they're not just something you're slapping around all the time. Thank you, Kane. That was what I was I trying said, to get there. It's limiting your ways of doing things, but expanding what you can do. Yeah, it's you're, to go, you're not going with the mindset think. of. Not going with the mindset of okay, I'm a fighter. I'm going to fight everything. I will kill them down because that's what a fighter does. It is the you know I am a character. I will think of you know rather than killing them, I will you know, how will I deal with them? Shall I put them in jail? <coughs> I you know recruit them? Shall I just mm. leave them there? You no. Know, shall I give the? Shall I you know take the bounty on them? Just while I'm enjoying the idea of the hero campaign. I was literally about yeah. to yeah, I was literally about to loop it around because this is why I asked you, Sam, the way that I asked you because I was hoping that you wouldn't come up with going. Well, I've played as so and so forth, and I enjoy it. That's too subjective. I'm looking at li- really what what about it can be fun. And Kane, yeah, you pretty much struck the struck oil, if not gold, which is it technically creates more possibilities for mechanics and roleplay to coincide. Because when you're just killing, um, that's it. It's just, okay, cool. Corpse on the floor, don't need to deal with it by... Um, you know, if you're murder hobos, as you said earlier, Kane, it's like, there's not really enough feeling into it. It's like, okay, this is no longer a problem, this is no longer a problem. And yet, don't get me wrong, like, to some degree it's kind of interesting to have it that, like, you kill this NPC and in this living, breathing world, that NPC is now missing forever, 
and you can't just you know go back to them and ask them questions because they're now dead and you know th- you know that that piece of the of the gameplay is now gone but in another in another way of looking at it it's it's also that factor of like if you are more of a pacifist in the way that you do things you now have to look at things differently even if you are constantly still being a fighter but you're just choosing not to kill people and choosing the limitations on exactly what type of things that are allowed there's still a certain functionality where you're thinking okay i can't put them six feet under i have to use hold back i have to um you know i have to make sure that i have my my ideology on this uh, set on this idea of uh, you know biological weapons uh nuclear weapons weapons of mass destruction all of those are taken out of the equation any weapons that would torture my my uh my enemies also all gone even even to the sake of you know actually stopping other people in my crew and saying no don't use this this is actually uh, you know evil in in my ideology and stuff like that or or even it's just it's just plain morally wrong because it's just you know it shouldn't be done this way um and that kind of creates an interesting boundary so in that portion um that is why i think that that can be fun and that's really what i was trying to do there sam as i was trying to sort of challenge challenge you to give me a reason for how pacifist character no what you did was you gave me an experience and again that's subjective I mean, um, that is a good reason enough is that you can expand your roster of characters out you can allow yourself to actually you know a character with an arc that isn't just i'm going to kill everybody and that's fine but again i was looking at more it from than... the objective concept rather than the subjective which is you know you're oh. talking more about your personal journey and it's... others might i will i will it's a subjective will question say... of can it be fun of i will say one subjective. argument yeah i i, I kind argument... of agree with sam there Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go on, King. Oh, all right. No, okay. I'll have no. to. You sure you want to you wanna go, Alex? Uh, we yeah, go? I got to get going now. You know, uh-huh. because, all right, all right, fine. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't. Okay. Bye. Yeah, Alex. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, 100%. Uh, I all I was going to say is, is the argument that Sam could have tried to bring up, but you uh, cut him down completely, is it is very similar to video games. I will, I will say that tabletop. It's actually not that far from playing a video game. Oh, as yeah, past yeah. This. Because, uh, like, I was playing Dishonored recently, and actually having to knock everyone out and come up with solutions that... It actually also shows you the darker side of pacifism. Yes. Which is, you can do a lot worse <laughs> things to people via not killing them. There are There's one where you brand them. him as a heretic, like some dude as a heretic, and it basically makes him become a poor person, and he ends up dying of the plague. Yeah, so it ends up... There's, nice. one where you, there's one where you give them off to criminals, and their tongues get cut out, and they have to work in mines. Yeah. Like, their own mines, don't forget. It's yeah, mines their, their own mines. mines. Yeah, so it's like, Jeez. there is... Yeah, pacifist. You can be evil being a pacifist, yes. technically, because you can put people in a lot worse situations by not killing them in the name of, yeah, like I said, not killing people. So, yeah. I think a fun idea to do, if you, if you can get away with it, your DM, you spoke to them and you, you can try and get away with it, your party, and, you know, they would might be cool with this. Playing an evil pacifist. Mm. I think that'd be <laughs> a fun one to do. I mean, we should say, in Dishonored, you're not an evil pacifist. Yeah, technically it's low chaos, but, you know... I mean... Uh, yeah. Technically, you, that, might, I mean, you might as well be a, an evil pacifist, let's be honest. You're either a good murderer or an evil pacifist. <laughs> you're not a good murderer or evil <laughs> See what I mean? Like, there's no, you're, there's you're, no good... You're say, either, evil, you're you're either an evil murderer or a slightly less evil pacifist. But still this evil. Morally neutral or morally grey. Let's not, <laughs> let's not go with either or in the spectrum Yeah, here. fair enough. Like, I guess you're right, because to be honest, you don't know that these things are going to happen to them, to be fair. You brand no, them and, and no, you're like... No, actually one of them just straight up tells you that that's what he's going to do to them. Yeah. To be fair, oh, it's shoot, after yeah. he's kidnapped them. Yeah. But oh, don't forget... he still tells you that's what's going to happen. And the branding one, you read a book that literally tells you about branding, and you go... That's a great idea. <laughs> and don't forget the don't forget the classic of getting some woman to give to your stalker. Yes. yes, you literally you literally knock her out and give her to her random stalker, and yeah. just go, yep, yeah. right. and then he just boats away. Yeah. I mean, 
We'll have to agree that at least when you play as the assassin Dowd, you become slightly better whenever you don't kill everybody. Slightly. Slightly. So yeah. to uh, to answer the question, because I, I wanted to drag this out just because I wanted a little bit more of a uh, uh, functionality question uh, of objectivity rather than just subjectivity. And yet, don't, yet, look, I already understand that obviously the whole concept of fun is subjective. But I mean, as in yeah. like looking at over the wide spectrum, not only is it the sense of you know role play because we already talked about this, but also in the forms of like actual mechanics, like it opens up a wide array of different possibilities which can be considered either fun or troublesome. And the reason I asked you about why you think it's fun is because I was hoping that you'd answer, you know, because of, you know, all and, of these different things. And, and to be fair, you <laughs> did say given experience. Um, no, I, no, I said given example. I didn't say exactly, given experience. An example. I said given example, example as to when why I it can past. No, I said give an example. I didn't say give... And it, in fact, I even multiple times said don't give me an experience, give me an example. Um, Never. So, yeah, I mean, either way, the the reason as to why I asked this is because obviously I wanted to see what you would give me as an answer. Um, Kane pretty much hit, hit, hit the nail on the head, though, because I do think that, like, ultimately you can say, oh, I find this fun, but ultimately that doesn't tell a wide, a wide array of stuff. And I think that obviously saying, like, why we think it's fun, how we th feel that it could be fun is through these different means, through role play, through extra mechanics, through the fact that like you can't just do these things. Like, yes, you can, but then you can't claim your character to be the. Person Although I will say well. this: giving a subjective um, take on it, like your experience on something, is still a good way to show someone to a degree that it can be fun because you're giving it an experience and you're describing in a way how you found it fun. And although, yes, that's your sense of fun but it's how you enjoyed it you're still showing someone how it can be played oh, how definitely. you did it so That's... i wouldn't say what sam what sam said yes didn't answer your question i'm not by the way I'm, i want to point this out just so sam you also know this i'm not saying what you said was wrong it's just not what i was asking for Oh, it was wrong <laughs> uh, no, no <laughs> absolutely not no because uh, I, I look i honestly think that you telling us about your your character is important for us to know like how and where you found it fun. It's just not the question I asked. Um, that being said, I do His teacher think... teacher instincts kicking in, Sam, don't worry, uh, answer. Haha, uh, <laughs> <laughs> very funny. Uh, that being said, I do think that, it, you know, in through the perspective of what you said, through the perspective of Alex, what, has, what Alex has said, what Kane has said, what I've said, I do think that, yes, it can be fun, but looking back at the argument that Alex and I have had over just Warhead, which, by the way, no way is it that a pacifistic character. All right, get it out now, Joe, get it out. No, yeah, my, not, my, not my, not here. my no, 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 <laughs> my answer really is just that is the reason why I don't think it can be very fun for players to argue about whether or not their character is and isn't. And here's my, here's my reason why, and this actually does loop back to tabletop RPGs, alignments. Oh, my character is my character is neutral good. So yeah, I, my character is a pacifist. I, I'm, but yeah, I'm neutral good. Blah blah blah. And then they suddenly go off and do something that is completely against their alignment. And then they argue hardcore style against their DM because it's like, no, it technically is pacifism because of this, that, and the other reason. And you know, just because it doesn't fit in. I this yeah, thing. but that's that's what I mean when in that case that is. Bad communication between player and DM. I'm not saying it's, it's technically not even, Eva's fault. It's not but... even necessarily just communication. I think it's also potentially really bad understanding of what both of them feel pacifism is. Because again, we had the we had the rules down on what pacifism is. And yet right, again, well, no, but the... that's that's what I mean by bad communication. Because by talking about your to your player, you can't just go off. Oh, their their view of pacifism is the same as mine. You have to go. Okay, how does you or how does your character view what pacifism is? That may not be what pacifism actually is, but if that is pacifism to that character, but then if you're then, then that's creating... the same way. That's that's the same way you also view alignments. What is neutral good to you? Because that can mean something quite radically different to another person. That's fine, but let's say, for instance, okay, I'm neutral good, and then I just full-on just murder a random person in the street, and then I just wear their fucking, like, organs as, as jewellery. 
and then, and then they had no reason for it, and I just did it because my character enjoyed it. That's not neutral good. Well, no, but that oh. is, again, that's bad communication, not understanding entirely what it is, which I know goes back to your point of not understanding something. Yeah. But that is bad communication, the fact that you went to your DM, oh, by the way, I'm neutral good, and you do something like that, where it's like, well, clearly you're not. Mm. Like, you're either really not trying here, or there's, there's something else going on. This is also a so, thing that I think is so dangerous, because we're talking about a character that we never really explicitly use the word pacifist for, and retroactivity yeah. is so dangerous. Because we did this once before, it's like, we added some we added some backstory to a character retroactively, and then someone said, uh, but then again, they said this, and they did that. And if their backstory is actually now this, then how and why did they say that? That technically doesn't make any, any sense. Blah, 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 blah. And it's the same thing with trying to add the concepts of the labels to a character uh, that was played, like, uh, up to a year ago or even longer. Oh, yeah. That factor of, like, you know, retroactivity and retroactively fitting things just does not work very well. Uh, Sam, you and I had obviously this uh, ar like this argument and discussion of like retroactively trying to change the way that some of your perks worked with Adrian and even some of the backstory. And again, yes. like retroactively fitting it really came down to communication, as Kane you were saying. Yeah, we we had to sit down, we had to look at it, and uh, obviously at one point, you know, you said to me. I do not think that I need. I should change any of these perks because otherwise, then I'm re I'm retroactively changing it and making it worse. And I said, okay, fine, but therefore that means I can't let you retroactively change an ability to make another one better. Um, in this particular way, after you've already stated what it what it does and how it works. Yeah. Um, so we can. Uh, sorry, go on. Yeah. Uh, when I want when, when we talked about the night and the night armor and such. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously we we came to that understanding, and that's again a, you know a form of form of bad command bad communication then turned good communication because at that point we then had the the you know the together you know understanding of how it works and what it is and you know where it's going to go and it you know if it was ever going to go anywhere ever again and stuff like that and that you know as a DM as a narrator as whatever you have to have that with your players and as a player you have to have that with your DM and narrator you have to to you know get that understanding and again obviously to a certain degree of looking at stuff retroactively you can say whatever you want about your character people are going to disagree with it as just happened you know here and and it's the same with like in future games and hell even in future podcasts we're gonna have disagreements on this kind of stuff because of course it's a lot of it is subjectivity but when we're looking at the defined rules and looking back at the actions Three out of four people, dis you know, disagreed with the idea of pacifism because it, it is not meeting it to a T. And another car and another and, and, uh, another person is is disagreeing because that they, you know, they are close to home with that. And that's the problem with retroactively looking at characters. You know, oh, can they be fun as pacifists? Well, I played as a pacifist. It's like, n n no, you didn't. Like, actually, start a pa you know, start with the ideology of pacifism play through it and then tell me if it was fun um, rather than talking about it back then. Now, obviously, Sam, you, you are both playing characters that are pacifists and you have played as characters pacifists that from the get-go you were like, this is going to be a pacifistic character. They are going to think, do these things. I think you can play a character that becomes a pacifist. Oh, yeah. But what, love. what I mean is you never use the ideology of pacifism and then you then just go and basically try to fit it retcon into that it. yeah yeah you try and retcon your your the way that you look at it the way that you envision it um and that becomes very dangerous because then you get into disagreements with people on the idea and then you then have this warped ideology of what a pacifistic character is um because i've played as a pacifist character you've played as a pacifist character <laughs> Yeah, yeah. As I said, I played a Simon Lime, um, yeah, okay. and I didn't really like it, but I could see why it can be enjoyable. Um, and I like the idea of playing in hero campaigns and stuff like that. You were in the perfect environment for that character, though. To be fair, no, I, was, I wasn't. Um, and a lot of the time, it would be you know, it was rather difficult to do and try and be passive. And because that was like that was like the sort of world of trying to be a 
a pacifist in a cruel world, like yeah. where it's just unforgiving and everyone's out for themselves, it was and there's very of, few chances. It was kind of that awkward situation of it was trying to be like a vegetarian in a location where there is no fruit or vegetables, and all there is is mm. animals that are trying to kill you, and you're just sat there like, damn it, ah, my character's gonna starve if he doesn't eat this like donkey or something like that, and it, yeah, and it's the same thing with yeah. like being in a cruel world and stuff. It's hard mode. Anyway, hi. Sorry about that. I had to like quickly get, uh, you know, get shoved off to the side. But yes, so, oh, good. Uh, you've actually just come in for the for the end of this. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to as, sign off, and you know, because I was rude otherwise. <laughs> as for as for as for this, I th- you know, going back to what I was saying, I think it can be, but I think you have to know that you are playing as a pacifist character from the get go. Or you have to know that you are playing as a pacifist character at some point during the time that you're playing it. Rather than play the character, never think of the ideologies of pacifism, never really claim to be a pacifist, and then right at the end say, yes, they were definitely a pacifist. Because at that point, then you're just changing the ideologies of of what it is. You're trying to change it to suit the needs of the way that you look back at that character. Um, So I'd say it can be fun, but it really de- it really determines how exactly uh, how it it can be used in 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 you know in in the game and how it can fit with the rest of the uh campaign and i guess it's really going back down to the same thing that we always talk about in this which is good communication with your dm good communication with your party if you think that this is going to be something that affects them are you all playing as a bunch of murder hobos and you just so happen to be the the one guy who's just like yeah i'm going to stop them from fighting all the time and they're never going to be allowed to do this that and the other or are you going to be the the odd one out where everyone's playing as a pacifist and you're like i I kill people but you know only in this particular situation and you know blah 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 um, you know, it's it's all about communication. So I think a pacifist character can be fun, but there's a lot of modifiers to how you can cons- what you consider fun is. <laughs> so I guess this hasn't really been as helpful as. Yeah, as thank you for like. extending that question thirty minutes. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I for me no. Uh, I don't think it is particularly fun. It is like for me, it's like playing it on hard mode, because um, you know, because in real life, pacifism is hard, especially when you've got a game that is structured around combat. It becomes it can open up new possibilities with it, but you have to actually have those possibilities in play in order for it to be interesting. And you know, and yeah, it just you know, it's just fun to like fight evil. You know, it's it's fun to have have new abilities because it's the game of combat. It kind of goes against that. For me, I would say no. Again, no. I'm being like saying this is just me. All right. No, everyone else can definitely find enjoyment in it, but for me, I would say it's a no. <laughs> I mean, I actually That's played perfectly acceptable. Yeah, I actually played as a pacifistic character from start to finish, and I I I 100 percent agree with you. Like, it can be fun. I just this just not for me. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Uh, any last words, Kane or Sam? In and Kane should go, then I'll go. Okay. What we think? What? Um. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah. How they? Um. I mean, I, th- I think we're going over again what we said with. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't I'm just gonna be. We're just gonna be repeating at this point. There's not really much else yeah. to add. Fair enough. So, what do you think? Yes or no? Can it be fun? Oh, yeah, I mean, I did answer this, but yes, I think it can be. I also Personally. think it can be fun, yes. Well, in that case, I guess I guess there's, again, three to one odds. I mean, personally, I don't find it fun, but I know that it can be. So thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please check us out on at Animite Tales uh, on YouTube. Check us out on at Animite Tales on Twitter. And of course, have a look at the Animite Tales uh, website, which you will be able to now see some of the game that is currently open as it is an open beta tabletop RPG for you to enjoy. Thank you very much for listening, and as always, have a wonderful night. Bye! See you in the future. Veganism sure got brought up a lot this episode, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> ciao, ciao for now! <laughs> Damn it, Kate!